morning. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to our kitchen. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's been a while since we've done any canning. If you've been following the channel, you know I had some surgery and I've had to have light duty. Well, I'm ready to do some canning. We're going to can some pasta sauce today. And since we didn't grow these tomatoes, we're going to start by dumping them into some hot water so that the peels loosen and we're going to peel them. So blanch and peel. That's how we're going to start. Start adding our tomatoes. I wash these. Now, in the past, I've taken my tomatoes and I've put them in my blender and just pureed them really good after coring the hard white part out. But now that they're spraying so many special sprays and chemicals on our produce, I do not want these tomato skins in our sauce. Now, if I had grown these tomatoes and I had control over what was put on them, that would be a different story. But I really love homemade tomato sauce. And I'm going to make this sauce, pasta sauce, a little different than I've done in the past. I'm actually going to put a lot less seasoning in it. Um, having done some fine dining here in Las Vegas with my husband, who is of Italian descent, I learned that a lot of the finer restaurants actually don't have excessive flavoring in their tomato sauce. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to blanch and peel our tomatoes. And when they're not too hot to handle, we're going to finish getting the peel off and we're going to put them in our blender to puree them to get the process started a little faster. Then we're going to put them in a stainless steel pot. And we're using stainless steel for everything in our process because if you use aluminum, the aluminum will get in your food, especially with an acidic sauce like tomato sauce. Don't cook with aluminum. Don't cook with Teflon. Use stainless steel. All right, let's get started. The water is really hot. It could potentially come up to a low boil, but we're just trying to split them. And you can see over here that I have tomatoes that are, have split nicely from being in the hot water. And so for my setup that I'm using today, I have my glass cutting board. I have my tomatoes that have been blanched that are ready to be peeled. Back here, I have my compost bowl. And this is a compost bowl that goes into the I Do electronic composter. Works really awesome. And I have my blender pitcher. Now, if you don't have this, it doesn't matter. You don't have to compost your tomato skins. Um, you could even do them in an outdoor compost if you wanted, and you don't even have to have a blender. You could just put them in a big cook pot once you get the peels off. But we're going to do it this way because I love making my own homemade compost. And I'm letting these tomatoes kind of stage in this pot because they are hot, right? They're hot, and I don't want to burn myself. I know the first time I tried doing it this way, it was really, really hot. So now I've, I've let them sit just long enough that I can grab them. I'm going to get that little core out right here. And then once we puree them, we're going to stick them in our stock pot. These are going to cook down for quite a while. So this is a project that you're going to want to do when you have a weekend or some time on your hands. This is quite time consuming. I have about 30 pounds of tomatoes here. And in this process, these tomatoes will cook down to about half their volume. So I'm hoping to get about 15 pints of sauce. And I like to make tomato sauce every couple of years. I mean, if I found a great deal on tomatoes, I'd make it sooner. But it is a bit of a process. I'm using Roma tomatoes, and those probably aren't the most perfect taste tomatoes. But with how prices are in this country, just buy what you can afford that's on sale. That's what I'm doing. So we have some tomatoes ready now in our blender. That lid on there. I'm 
And I did fill that up quite a ways, but we'll just do custom blend to start. Actually, that worked pretty good. Now we're going to come over and we're going to dump this in our sauce pot. And this is a big burner. Let's get it turned on. Just a little below medium. We don't want to burn it, but we've got a lot of cooking down to do, so we do want it warm enough to make that process happen. So I'm noticing that if you take this part right here out before you put your tomato in your hot water to blanch and peel it. It's easier to get it out and the peel actually comes off faster. So that's one thing that I've been doing that I've changed since I started this process. It's been a couple years since I've done this. And let's just take a look here so you can see what it's all looking like. As I get the tomatoes peeled, they're going in the blender. My compost container is getting pretty full over there. I have some tomatoes ready to be peeled that are cooling. I have the next batch in that's being blanched. As soon as I'm done peeling and blanching the tomatoes and pureeing them and adding them into the sauce pot, I'm going to get out one pepper, a red onion, and a couple of cloves of garlic, and we'll process those next. So I think it took me a few hours to get to this point. And as you can see we've got a pot full of tomato puree that's cooking down. We have a bucket full of tomato peels for compost and I have a few more tomatoes left in here. I'm gonna chop up these bell peppers, actually one bell pepper, one red onion, and two cloves of garlic and I'm gonna pray that with the three tomatoes that are left and we're gonna add it to this pot. Then we're gonna let this tomato mixture cook down until it's like 50% of the volume that it is right now. And then at that point, we're actually going to push it all through a sieve to get rid of any seeds. So this has been cooking down for about an hour. Let's come and take a look at it so you can see how it looks. It's really nice and thick. And now we're ready to strain some of our seeds out. Let's go ahead and get some of this strained out using the colander. It might be easier while there's a little more liquid content. And this is a really cool trick. So this is a very cool colander. You can get them with a stand, but I find that with this nice little hook, it just hooks on your pot and you don't need a stand. So I'm gonna turn this burner off for the moment. And actually let's get a heating pad so we don't burn ourselves. And I'm gonna bring this smaller stainless steel pot over. And actually I think I'll slide it over this way. And as soon as we get a little bit of our sauce in here, we'll turn the burner back on. So to start, have your pans really close together, right? You don't want this dripping on your stove top, trust me. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing here. We're just literally going to run our sauce through this colander. And we're going to keep doing this until we get a little buildup. Now, so far, all we've added in here is our tomatoes a bell pepper, an onion, and two cloves of garlic. The seasoning that we're going to add to this pasta sauce is going to be very simple. We're going to add some parsley flakes, some pepper, and some salt. I decided to keep it simple this time. And the cool thing about that is it gives you a little bit of versatility for your sauce. Now, I'm trying to mimic a really cool sauce that we've had out in some of these awesome restaurants, but the other cool thing about this, with this base of a sauce, you could actually use it for a lot of things. doesn't matter if it's going to be Italian, it could be a Mexican, it could be any number of really cool dishes. You get Cajun with it if you wanted, because you can always add stuff after the fact. So I'm just going to add this sauce into this pan. See, I've got it in here like that. And you just move it like this and like this, and it works it down. So I'm going to do that, and as soon as I get this all worked in, we will be back to add our seasoning. Ooh. 
We are at the point in which our efforts are paying off. It's time to get the sauce in the jars. So I have a canning funnel here. Definitely going to be our friend. I'm going to turn this off. Got the heat on under our pressure canner. Definitely use a pressure canner for this. The sauce is nice and thick and we're going to ladle it into our jars. I'm going to leave about an inch of head space because I'm also going to add two tablespoons of vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is great for this flavor wise. So excited for this sauce. And my, my, my husband had a, you want to come tell him? My husband had a taste test. Let's see what the Italian in the household thinks about this sauce. Oh, come over here so they can, come over here so they can hear you, sweetie. Okay, let me taste. Well, I have to say. Here, here. Well, get a spoon. Get a spoon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, he's going to get, he's going to get a spoon. Are you doing the video? Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 you're going to... Hi, Ron. He might be <laughs> on. How about Parker? <laughs> okay, ready? Let might be see. hot. Be careful. Ooh, hot, hot. Wow. That's a, like a, my grandma's. Very, <laughs> very good. All right, let's get, let's get the sauce in the jars. Get it in the jar, baby. It is really good, bro. Thank you. I am so thrilled with the sauce. This is a lot of work, but there's a lot of satisfaction out of making it. All right, let's. Go ahead and get our vinegar in and see if we have any room left in our jars. We'll be able to add just a little more. And I'm adding the vinegar to adjust the acidity. Tomatoes are pretty acidic anyway, but the additional acidity will help to make your sauce shelf stable and protect it from any problems. So now I'm going to bring it up just to the bottom edge. The headspace is important. You don't want your food, your sauce that you make boiling up out of the jar because it'll get on your lids and it will affect your seal. Two pounds of tomatoes will get you a pint of sauce. All right, let's go ahead and get these rims wiped down. Make sure we don't have anything on them that would prevent it from sealing. And Meg, what is it? I think Meg is an interesting dog. We got her from a shelter and everything that she needs, it's a bark. She doesn't go paw the door if she's got to go outside. If she's hungry, she barks. She's, I think she's saying it's time for my these lids on. Oh, and I didn't even pull the rings out. That's crazy. Well, that's easy enough. But Meg told me that it's time to eat. That's right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so I need 16 rings. You know you're serious about canning when you have drawers dedicated to the whole task, right? I, I keep my rings, my lids in drawers. And when I buy new jars, if my rings are looking old, that's when I'll replace them. But you can definitely reuse these. Oh, no, you reuse Just you can't reuse the lid, but you can reuse the, the rings. Yeah. And if your rings get rusty, that's when you want to throw them out. Right. 
<laughs> He's trying to suck up to the dog, if you're listening. Okay, let's get these jars in our pot. I love the regular mouth the best, but I use whatever jars I have. The nice thing about the regular mouth is they're a little more stable in your shelves, less tippy. If you're serious about canning, definitely get yourself one of these. It will keep you from burning yourself. So I can actually fit 16 pints in this big pressure canner. This is a lot of work, but it's a lot of satisfaction. The great thing about jarring your own sauce is it doesn't have any preservative addit additives. They are completely unnecessary for safe canning. And the other thing about jars of sauce is there's no metal that's going to leach into your sauce, right? So you never, if you buy sauce in a can at the store, first don't. But if you do, if you ever had to for any reason, make sure you use it pretty quickly. All right, let's get this turned up. We're gonna let this blow steam for 10 minutes and we'll be back. Our timer is going off. Let's go ahead and add our rocker. Now we're gonna get this up to 15 pounds of pressure. And this is a 15 pound rocker. So when that starts rocking, you know you got 15 pounds of pressure. And that's actually the best way to verify that your pressure is right. So I recommend using a rocker. Once we get this up to 15 pounds of pressure, we're going to process it for 20 minutes. Then we'll be back. All right, our timer is going off. Hooray! Turning the heat off. Now I'm going to let this sit in this pressure canner pot for about two hours. And then when it's totally cooled off and all the pressure has come down, I am going to transfer my jars onto this towel. I'm going to let them sit there overnight. And then in the next morning, I'm going to test the lids to see if they all sealed. I hope you enjoyed making pasta sauce with me today. And I will be sure to include the recipe in the description of the video. If you enjoyed this content, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.